Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Playing with Junk. Today I got this surprise suitcase here and it has inside one Chinon Shinon Shinon DCM 206 portable image recorder uh, image copier well you may ask yourself what is a portable image copier um, I didn't know that until I uh, took it out and played around with it so it turned out is a pretty interesting device and I want to show you now. It's a device from the 1980s, maybe early 90s. Maybe we find out when we open it. We find probably a date code. Uh, it looks a little bit like a cassette player. So it has this window here. It has some scrolling wheels. But on the other side, you can see it has a lens. And it looks a little bit like a, a video projector, but that's not. Uh, video projectors have not been so small in the days. And if you open that, you find a roll of paper. It looks like thermal paper, like you know from old fax machines. Uh, so it is obviously something that takes pictures and prints it out. Well, it turned out that units like this have been used in schools or education. They have been used to copy the contents of whiteboards or blackboards or, well, any kind of writing uh, onto paper for uh, for example to give the students to learn at home or whatever. Uh, it has a grip here that makes it portable. Um, yes it's an image copier. It copies an image from wherever it is to paper. And before I take it apart, I want to show you how it works. It is a bit difficult to see here with the camera, but the window here is actually a viewfinder. You can see that small picture then uh, down there. You can see when I have my hand in front of the lens. And this is to roughly set up the unit to get the right picture to have the black or white board in the center and then you have these uh, wheels here and I hope you can see it you can narrow the picture in so you can select you see these orange borders that come from all four sides you can change that making the frame of the picture so the printed picture will be that part that is bright. Uh, the amount of paper it uses is always the same it just prints a smaller or bigger uh, picture on it. Okay let's see how it prints. We need electricity. Um, it has a battery case or something that looks like a battery case on the bottom but I think um, it just needs too much power so they never really uh, implemented that into the machine. Okay, power on. It makes a few noises. And the user interface is simple. There is a, an orange light, meaning busy. And then when the green light is on, you can hit the start button. 
Uh, there is a contrast uh, regulator and we have normal or enlarged that's how big it uh, the print is and we can select whiteboard blackboard or scenery so let's go for whiteboard and see what happens And that's how it looks. It on the whiteboard setting, it has some sort of character or line uh, recognition. Oh, that wrong. Uh, you can see that's my light switch, that's my door, that's the cables next to the door. It's pure black and white, like in the old days. Uh, our fax machines printed pictures. Um, let me see. Okay, uh, it's a bit narrow because I forgot to open the, the window again here. Uh, let's see what blackboard looks like. So the ding dong is not from the machine here, that's from the church next to me. Ooh, sounds nasty. Okay, there's not much coming. Yes, the printout actually gets a little bit longer when you choose a, a bigger picture. So you still can see the cables, but everything is, well, not really inverted, but I think it did not recognize any uh, patterns. So we go to scenery and look how, how that looks like. Maybe we also need a little bit more light on the object. Okay, that looks better. Yeah, I would say that looks like a black and white picture. Not really detailed, so I don't know how many pixel per inch we have. Maybe 100 or something. Cables, light switch, door. It's black because it's relatively dark uh, there, but yeah, you get it. And that's how it looks in reality, in color and in high definition. Okay then, I've turned it on, now let's take it apart. And because it's not a complete surprise, I have already played with it, uh, I know how to take it apart and that works like so. You open that case, that cover, you take out the paper roll and there is a massive axis so if someone bothers you you can hit it with that maybe it's a good tool for teachers then we have to remove this 
cover of this um, of this door here there are two screws and then it has a couple of hooks behind but you can't remove them because the mechanism here for this uh, lock hook here is in the way so the first thing is you have to remove these levers that's a little bit complicated because they have a strange clip here that looks like this and if you remove that you can take out that lever thing clip lever okay and then it's quite easy to remove that except that all the buttons on the top here will fly away so you next time you better remove them before you remove the cover just in case if you ever have such a device and you need to repair it okay then the other cover here comes off with a couple of screws that's one by the way that's this battery compartment that is in fact not a battery compartment it's just a, an empty compartment maybe you can stow the uh, the main cable here that's probably its purpose but it's definitely not made for batteries okay that's it top core is open well let's see then what's inside this puppy what do we have here the viewfinder you can see my hand when i wave it over the lens lens looks like this has a nice red coat on it uh, there are two more lenses next to it here and here that's the uh, distance sensor for the autofocus uh, system which is this chip here with everything around then autofocus is uh, comes from this stepper motor over this gear it turns the lens here to, to have get the picture sharp um, there is a stand foot here which has a complicated mechanical system to prevent it from springing out too fast it has a spring and a string that is uh, wrapped around this wheel here with this two ski and that's a the black part here is a, a mechanical brake filled with some sticky grease that should make the foot come out slowly well but it doesn't maybe the sticky grease is not so sticky anymore we have the three wheels for adjusting the picture size or the picture frame uh, we have a main board with a, a uv erasable erasable uh, apron that's the sticker here it covers the window so that no uv light goes in and erases its contents then the microprocessor maybe under that shield here 
I think there's not much of a micro. There's an oscillator, 15 megahertz, most likely relay, and a flat cable to the operator panel, and of course a power supply down here in the metal box here. And that's about it. And of course another stepper motor that moves this sensor assembly. And the reason why the sensor assembly must be moved is this is not a, a full frame CCD sensor that takes a full picture at once and prints it out. It's only a one line uh, CCD sensor like those you find in a, in a scanner. And this one line CCD sensor is moved across the, the picture to scan the entire picture and in the same time the paper is advanced and that goes synchronous and I show you how that looks like. So let's take a picture now. The first thing it does, it covers the opening from the viewfinder so that no light can come through that opening onto the sensor. You see the paper is advanced. And the sensor is moving behind the lens. And when it is ready, when it, is, uh, it has finished its travel, it returns back to the home position. And we are ready to take another picture. So that's the picture. My Macintosh, my old computer collection with the poster on the wall. It's pretty well. That's how it looks like in real color and high definition. And there is a nice funny little effect if you move the entire unit while it is capturing the picture. You will see what happens. You see, it looks really strange. That's when I'm look. Uh, that's the moment when I moved the device here too, here to another side. Yeah, you can pretty much distort the picture while it is taken. Or in other words, if you want to uh, make a picture of a person, it is possible in the same quality, of course. This person has to remain uh, in its position, not moving until the entire uh, picture is printed or it will look rather strange. Well, it's a bit like a mixture of Polaroid instant camera and old school long exposure uh, photography and that's the result, that's me in uh, fox quality whiteboard setting yeah you just have to remain uh, without moving for about i don't know 20 seconds and it's super easy to make selfies okay thanks for watching